I want to show you mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. He's referring to when Matthew has the tax collectors and Jesus dwells and dines with them. And the, the religious are like, why would you hang out with them? And the importance of us commingling with the world, though not being of the world, and not actually looking to it from a reflective state of commingling, but instead guiding, teaching, being a reflection of Christ in those scenarios so you can actually call people higher, call them into the love of God, and introduce them to the one that you love. But if we ostracize and we reject and say, I can only hang out with my church people, even though we all are in that state, you have to recognize the importance of loving your neighbor. It doesn't say love your Christian neighbor. It doesn't say love your believing neighbor. It says love your neighbor. Yes, Kelly, drink my water. I've been drinking so much water. I'm not going to go into details on my fast, but I've been having all the liquids you could possibly imagine. That's why it's perplexing to me, because I eat so healthy. But it's okay. I'm not looking for physical health. I'm looking for spiritual health every day. My physical health will be a ever-evolving journey while we live in our bodies, in the flesh. So I wasn't really sure what I fully wanted to talk about this morning as I was sitting with the Lord and processing Proverbs and just reflecting on some conversations that I was having this week with some incredible women, specifically. I love my guys, but a lot of girl conversations, girl chats this week. And some of them reflective on influence, reflective on growth and expansion, and I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, the, the impact that you're having right now is connected to the lineage and generational impact that can become when you're surrendered to the current moment and to what Christ is doing in that current moment. And I, I'm going to speak to myself in that regard because there are surely times where I'm like, man, numbers can get into your head. Um, finances can look not like what you hope that they would. Um, situations can look not like what you hope they would. You might have closed doors consistently and you're like, why does this keep happening? Now, I think if you're having closed doors consistently, there should be an internal uh, evaluation that takes place because... We serve a God who's predestined our good works for us. And I feel like when I'm dwelling in the house of the Lord, when I'm in this place of spiritual connection, and my prayer is literally, God, close the doors that aren't meant for me and open the doors that are. My eyes, my spiritual eyes are so open to, through discernment and the Holy Spirit guiding, to what is meant for me and what's not. And you can find so much more peace in the way that you go through life on a day-to-day -day basis when something looks like a no or is literally told to you no, you're just like, that's okay. It wasn't for me anyway, right? That wasn't for me. That blessing wasn't mine. And so specifically speaking to Genesis and what happened with Jacob and Esau and when he was taking the birthright of his brother, right? So Esau was receiving the birthright. He was the oldest son and he was receiving the blessing as the oldest son. And his father, Isaac, sent Esau on a mission to go kill his favorite wild game, bring it back, make dinner for him because he was on his deathbed, and then come in and I'm going to give you your, your blessing. And so he did that thing. And in the meanwhile, his mom, which is Isaac's wife, Rebecca, who has always loved Jacob, the little one, the baby, a little bit more. And I don't think that it discredits her love for Esau. It's just, I don't think I have favorites. But there was something there, right? There was something there. And an element of that, too, was that her baby was being courted um, by some people who were local. And she really had this desire of him going back and marrying someone in her family line. And those women were causing friction to Rebecca. So... There was probably a lot more going on, and not to say it was from God by any means, because it ended up coming back and biting Jacob in the butt. <laughs> and this is a conversation of karma. This is a conversation of what goes around comes around. But ultimately, it's the 
God's plan. And yesterday I had posted something where it said, um, it was a really cool just like clip that blessed me, a saying um, that God's love recklessly pursues us and that in that pursuit we can't even dodge God's blessing. We can't even get out of his blessing because he just loves us so much. He has a plan for us to prosper. And I got a response from that saying that that's not sound doctrine. 